Hey, welcome guys. You know, in my channel I've reviewed quite a few media players, but it's really hard for me to pick the best one up until now. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the review of the NVIDIA Shield TV, the greatest media player I have ever used and reviewed, and not only that, it's also a rival for console gaming. So starting things off with the controller, it looks pretty comparable to the Xbox 360 or Xbox One controller with some more additional buttons and features. Now you have the regular dual joysticks, button pads, and stuff like that. You have volume control on the bottom, which controls volume output for the NVIDIA Shield TV, not your home theater system or TV itself. So that's one thing to make clear. There are dual trigger buttons at the back, along with some top buttons on the left and right. There's a 3.5mm headphone jack, which allows you to broadcast audio straight from the NVIDIA Shield TV to your headphone set, if you have it connected here. There is a micro USB port for charging the battery. Now, fully charging the battery takes almost 5 hours, and the battery itself lasts close to 40, but I average maybe 30, depending on if I'm using the headset connector or not. So you notice that the buttons here are actually illuminated uh, with a white color. That NVIDIA logo is actually a touch button, and these glowing white buttons are actually touch buttons as well. They don't actually press in, they just touch them. Now, they had some uh, controls before where if you kind of slide it in a certain gesture, a mouse would appear on the NVIDIA Shield TV and you can use it, but with a recent update that's been removed. NVIDIA said they're going to add it back, but there's no ETA on that. Generally, the controller is very comfortable to use, even though it's a bit clunky and big. You kind of get used to it and it's actually very comfortable after a while. Generally though, unfortunately, the home button and the back button on the controller itself don't really work with a lot of apps on the NVIDIA Shield TV. But that's more of an Android TV issue it seems because not a lot of apps are compatible with it, unfortunately. Now, there are a number of additional accessories to purchase. One is the Nvidia Shield Remote seen on the left, the Nvidia Stand in the middle, and an additional controller. And the controller comes out of the box, the other two devices on the left, or accessories rather, are additional purchases if you want to make them. I do want to forewarn you guys that I had this really terrible experience straight out of the box. This device was atrociously buggy, I couldn't do anything, it constantly crash apps. Uh, I had to reboot the device because it would constantly freeze. Even trying to do a system update, it would constantly freeze. When I was able to get two huge updates pushed through, the device has been stable since then. In terms of the physical design, there's only one tiny, tiny flaw, and that's of course that it attracts a fair amount of dust. It's a bit of a dust magnet. Regardless of that, if you look past that, it's a very sleek looking device. I'm going over the ports and the sides. On the left and right, there's pretty much nothing. Now on the very front, there's not much to show you, there's just a sensor which is used for the remote to communicate, and that's all. Now on the top, see that NVIDIA logo in black? That's actually a touch button. It's actually the button to power on the device and also use to sync the remote control. It doesn't press in, it's a touch panel, and when it is turned on, it emits a nice green hue light, which is actually kind of classy. Now in terms of just the size, just to give you another example, if I place the Galaxy S7 on top, there's a comparison. It just kind of gives you a really good idea of how tiny this device is. There's a lot happening on the back of the device though, so starting on the back left, there's a micro SD card slot, a micro USB port, two USB 3.0 ports, an Ethernet gigabit port, and an HDMI port. And there's an HDMI wire included with the NVIDIA Shield out of the box. And if, lastly on the right is the power connection. Now it comes in two different options of 16 or 500 gig internal storage option. I opted for the 16 gigs of internal storage because I don't need to download that many Android apps. I'd rather just play PC games, which I'll get into very shortly. In terms of the processing power and GPU, it's powered by NVIDIA Tegra X1 processor with 256 core GPU and 3 gigs of RAM. Now this is a 4K ready device. It does support 4K video playback at 60 frames per second. It supports H.265 and H.264 compression. But for a full list of what kind of file types are supported from this, from a media player perspective, be sure to find the list in the video description. This is straight from NVIDIA, the official list given by them. It does also support 7.1 and 5.1 Dolby surround sound, so you're in luck there. Now it does support Bluetooth 4.1 and it does have a 802.11 AC Wi-Fi signal support. In terms of power consumption, it uses between 5 to 10 watts of power. And up until now, this current video date is running Android 6.0, Marshmallow, Android TV. And yes, it does support Google Cast, so anything that Google Chromecast can do, this can do. Okay, so typically, this is what Android TV looks like. This is with the Marshmallow update. And the way it basically works um, in Android TV fashion is that the device is primarily designed to fall asleep, not so much turn off. So basically when you press the NVIDIA logo on the gaming controller, it'll just boot up like within a second or two. So this is the main interface you'll get, uh, it's very standard for Android TV. 
by either going all the way up or pressing the NVIDIA logo while you're here, you can get Google Voice search. So I'm gonna actually scroll up instead and use a voice command. What is the weather today? And there you have it, it's pulling my location, which I'm in Brampton, Ontario. The top bar we have here on Android TV is kind of things recommended, recommended for you, sorry. Um, I find that only a quarter or sometimes even less than a quarter of the stuff shown here is stuff I might be interested in. The other stuff has absolutely no relevance to me whatsoever. Keep in mind that I'm actually doing all this um, with a Wi-Fi AC adapter. In fact, uh, let me just show you guys how far away I am right now. Here's just a quick tour of how far the router is from the NVIDIA Shield TV. So the reason I'm able to get such a solid connection, even if I'm streaming PC games from my PC or from NVIDIA Cloud, is because of my router. It's a wicked one. I'll put a review to that router in the video description. Essentially, you know, going over some of the most basic stuff to get it, get it out of the way. Here you have your system settings menu, very similar to an Android or phone setup. It can pair new devices, so on and so forth, control your accounts, uh, uninstall apps, check storage, Wi-Fi connection, your accessories, in this case I have the controller, and the power settings, which is basically turn it off, or sleep mode, or restart the device. Now the good chunk of things here is of course from the Google Play Store. Now, this is not connected to your typical Google Play Store, which you would find apps on your Android device, uh, like your tablet or phone. These are Android TV apps. And the selection, even though Android TV has been out for over a year, the selection is still pretty bad. Um, that's actually due to the part that Google doesn't promote Android TV enough. Now just down in the second row we have something called Shield Hub, which includes GameStream, which tends to disappear on its own randomly, I'm not sure why, uh, but I'll tell you guys how to fix that issue. But Netflix, surprisingly, is always here. This is like a static app. Now, it opened in almost, what, two seconds just now, because I just recently opened it and closed it. Typically, if I leave the Nvidia Shield to sleep and it comes the next day, it takes about five seconds actually, never more than ten, to open. And once the app is open, navigating and opening content and playing it is like instant. I just press it and it's ready to go. Uh, so the same can actually be said about um, Netflix, very, sorry, Hulu, my bad. Uh, very similar experience, very fast, very speedy. Unfortunately, the same cannot be said about the YouTube app. Now it does open really fast, but unfortunately it has a YouTube lean back um, UI which is awful. It's been like this for years. I wish it was more like uh, the YouTube app on your phone or tablet. Unfortunately, that's not the case. And generally though, in terms of speed and searching, it's fast. Um, and you know, throughout any app that you're using, uh, if it's supported, not Netflix, it doesn't work. You can always use the voice command. Um, so let's try it. Babbling Boolean. So there, it's pulling up stuff from my YouTube channel. Plex, I'm not a fan of, but it is available. I find that sorting your home videos, it kind of just dumps everything out in the open. There is a Kodi app now officially for Android TV. Very complicated to use, not easy to use, but hey, it is there. So just wanted to give you guys that heads up. Personally, all I need is VLC player. Um, it's, it plays almost any video I can throw at it, any media content. So not only am I able to play almost anything I can throw at it from the USB port, but if you go to local network, um, I'm actually able to access stuff stored on my PC wirelessly, again, from way upstairs when I showed you guys earlier. And as you can see, it's uh, pretty fast, so I can go through all folders, photos, uh, videos. Um, so you can through, sort through you know, all videos. You can sort by folder, which is what I prefer. This is what I want. So you have a whole bunch of stuff here. It plays 4K videos just fine, and it doesn't seem to struggle at all. And this is all over a Wi-Fi connection. So one of the big mysteries uh, people often wonder is, is this a console killer? Yes and no, it depends on your perspective. Um, so you can actually play PC games. So there's a number of ways to accomplish this. So if for example, go to Shield Games. Here you have games designed for Nvidia Shield. Well, not specifically for it just alone, but you know, they are available. The selection kind of consists of some Android apps and some NVIDIA PC game apps. But if you go over to say GeForce Now, this is more stuff streaming from the cloud. So as you guys can see, I have Sleeping Dogs as my recently played, so I'll select it. And the loading time is pretty decent, it's not too long. In fact, the experience itself, I haven't experienced any lag at all, ever, on uh, streaming games from the cloud from NVIDIA services. Um, in fact, I um, think I'm about five to six hours into Sleeping Dogs and it runs great. Uh, so generally though, you know, when it comes to just shooting, fighting, combat controls and mechanics, it, it's seamless. There's no lag and again, I can't emphasize enough that I'm on a Wi-Fi connection, not even Ethernet for that matter. 
Um, the graphics are great. I maxed them out here. Um, of course, that'll still vary depending on which game you're playing. Um, for the most part, it's basically a PC game with a gaming controller. It even tells you if you're going to exit the game that if it's saving, don't turn off your PC, it's saving. So it thinks you're on a PC. And the last thing to really state is that this is 1080p at 60 frames per second video game uh, performance you're getting here. But this is more hype than it is worth, and there's actually a good reason why. The game library from NVIDIA servers to stream is actually really limited. There's not that many. This is not the best way to go about playing games. Um, you can search and filter, but again, the selection is pretty bare. Now, you do have this service where you can stream games. Um, you get th the first three months free, and after that, up here in Canada, it's $10.99 a month. I think in, Ca in America, it's $7.99 a month. But again, the selection is pretty poor. The one I really care about is Game Stream. Which basically does is pull PC games from my PC and allow me to play them. Uh, so once again, I've actually tested this service with Steam games and EA Origin games and yes, even uh, Uplay. And all of them seem to work fine. I'm not sure how NVIDIA did it, but all you have to do is basically go to your GeForce Experience app on your computer, which is actually installed and integrated with my NVIDIA driver. And I log in there, use the same account and then your NVIDIA Shield TV console and you're set to go. So I'm going to switch over to Call of Duty Advanced Warfare. Again, this is streaming from my PC. Um, so what ex exactly happens is that I was midway through the campaign on my PC and I actually tested it on the NVIDIA Shield and I was able to complete the game on the NVIDIA Shield. The data, the save data carries over. So what you guys are actually seeing right now is actually me streaming content, the game itself, straight from my PC and straight onto the NVIDIA console. So if I feel like it, I'll be playing video games uh, that I want to continue onto my TV. And if my wife wants to use a TV, then I can just go back to my PC and continue the game from there anyway. Um, this is actually one of the best things to me about this console. Uh, it's actually probably the most underrated feature about it as well. Now, again, it's very dependent on what kind of graphics you're going to get. Because the graphics right now are feeding from the PC itself. So if your PC is not that great for gaming, don't expect great results. Lag time is, well, there is almost no lag time. Uh, in terms of like you know, response time and sensitivity, everything's fantastic. It feels as if I'm sitting at my desk and playing the game. There's no lag whatsoever at all. The game stream app here seems to randomly disappear. Even if I use it yesterday and I come back today, it could be there, it could be not there. I have no idea. So what I had to actually do, in fact, some of these apps here tend to randomly disappear too, is go to Sideload Launcher. This is an app from Google Play Store. I highly recommend you get it. I installed it and here you're able to look at all the apps that are currently available. So if I go to Shield Hub, which is not available on the home screen and actually has a much more um, you know, seamless menu, it's much more integrated with GeForce experience, I'm able to, to go everything through here and it clearly says PC games and yeah, here are my PC games. So really, I wish that Android TV worked better. Unfortunately, it doesn't. Last but not least, I decided to just leave this as one of the last things because it's really on a side note is that you do have Android games available. Again, this is a limited library of games available because they have to be designed for Android TV. Now I'm gonna say this once more, this is by far the best media player I've ever used or reviewed. Now out of the box, there are a lot of bugs to the point you can barely use it, and you're gonna to struggle to get those system updates in as it struggles to update and it will constantly freeze, but when you finally get those two huge updates through, it's a very smooth experience. Now, you're getting Android TV, which NVIDIA promotes as one of his biggest strengths, which is true. Ironically, it's one of his biggest weaknesses also. The strengths, of course, is that you have access to Google Play, which includes some Android TV apps like VLC Player, uh, Plex, Kodi, Netflix, Hulu. Now, the issue with Android TV, though, is that apps don't seem to always appear on the home screen. The recommendation system from Google is awful, which is very surprising. And it just seems like Google doesn't really care about Android TV. They haven't really fixed up a lot of those issues. I really suggest that you get Sideload Launcher so you can actually view a full list of apps that are available installed on your device. Now in terms of gaming, this is kind of debatable if it's a console killer as the online and video gaming library is pretty poor. My biggest thing for making up for that is of course if you have a good gaming PC you can stream those games straight to your TV on the Nvidia Shield TV. Overall the strengths are so wicked on this thing that it vastly outweighs the cons. So if you guys found this video useful be sure to check out my Facebook, Google+, Instagram and Twitter links in the video description. Hit that like button it does help. Subscribe and thanks for watching.